Pro Revenge Story. I did what my mom told me to do, and got revenge. Disclaimer, this story is not meant to belittle single mothers nor people with mental illness, and yes, I do love my mom, but this was a story about how things can come back to bite you. So just some backstory here, my parents divorced when I was just in kindergarten, so no more than six. My mom got full custody of us and she suffered from mental illness, I believe she has borderline personality disorder, and she was also a typical narcissistic parent. Anyway, ever since the divorce she would always tell us how it was not her fault we didn't have enough money for things, and blame my dad. Example, if there was nothing to eat for breakfast and we complained like small children do when they were hungry, she snapped, it's your father's fault so cry to him. I just learned never to complain and do without and spent my childhood taking care of her. My sister and I were trained from when I was about 8, my sister 10, to come right home from school and do her homework, and clean the house and take care of ourselves. Don't ask mom to make dinner, make it yourself, and all of the chores so mom doesn't have to do anything. It sounds bizarre, but we thought that was normal, as well as being hit and told on a daily basis that we were worthless. It got worse my senior year of high school. My grandma died a few months before that summer and my mom quit her job and blew through the money my grandma left her before the summer was over, this was close to $75,000 back in 2000. She refused to get another job and kept coming up with excuses not to work, like I need a break. Get off my back. I hurt my leg. Etc. While she was going out drinking with her friend and acting like a carefree teenager. So, I spent my senior year working hard at school, at my part-time job after school and pretty much taking care of an overgrown child who refused to work or help out. Anytime a utility shut off or there was no food left in the house, she just griped, you have a job. Why can't you pay it? If I brought up the fact that my dad sent her child support, she would just complain that she had my sister's tuition, which I later learned was BS. She would flaunt that child support check, and laugh and refer to it as, mommy's paycheck. Flash forward to when I am about to choose a college and my mom keeps bellyaching about the costs and of course has zero saved in a college fund. I couldn't afford a private university since I only was offered a partial scholarship, so I decided to go to a reasonably priced and still highly regarded state university. My freshman year, I was pretty much able to swing the cost of tuition and room and board, I lived on campus, since last year of high school, I filed my taxes and FAFSA as soon as my W-2s came in, so I had a decent amount of grants. During my first year of college, I almost became unable to receive financial aid for my second year of college. Why, my W-2s were mailed to my home address, and my mom being the caring and supportive mother she was, shredded them and threw them in the trash. I found out because my sister was home that weekend and saw it. My mom denied and when I came home for spring break and pressed her for it, she lied and said her friend had them, her friend was ACPA. My sister called my mom out on this bluff by calling the friend who said she did not have any of our tax information. She was very concerned and told me and my sister to request duplicate W-2s, and have them sent home and she will have my mom send them over to me. My mom was pissed that we had checked with her friend and called her out on her bluff, but true to her word, her friend did my taxes for me and my FAFSA, I had offered to pay her or at least babysit for her, but she told me it was okay. I think she knew my mom was mentally unstable and felt sorry for me and my sister. At this point, I learned that my mom had not been helping out my sister at all with tuition like she claimed, and my sister had mentioned it to my dad who had called her out and demanded to know where the child support was going to. My mom insisted he wasn't paying her enough money and that's why she couldn't help us out. During my second year of college my W-2s were once again sent home, and my mom once again accidentally threw them in trash. I had to request duplicate W-2s for my summer job not just once but twice, because she kept throwing them in the trash. I filed my tax return late that year, and as a result my FAFSA was filed late so I wasn't able to get the full amount I was receiving before. Anytime I complained to her about money or no food in the house it was, complain to your father. Well, the summer before my third year, I was burned out on my mom's BS. I was working full time for the summer and saving as much as I could, but she was refusing to help me out at all while I was home with food or anything. She was pissed that instead of paying the phone bill so she could make long distance calls to her online friends and spend all day in chat rooms, this was back when we had dial up, I had the audacity to spend my hard earned money on a cell phone and pay that bill myself. She told everyone I should just drop out because I wasn't applying myself hard enough, I was in the honors program, and she would play martyr with all her friends about, it's so hard when you have kids in college and they eat your out of house and home and come to you for money. At the end of the summer, 
I had saved a thousand dollars but the school won't let me move into the dorm unless I paid 50% up front which I was about $10,000. I didn't know what to do as all summer the university had told me I was fine, and then on move-in day told me I couldn't move into the dorm. I called my dad in a panic and he spoke to someone who agreed to give me 24 hours. I moved in, and the next day my dad showed up first thing with a coffee and a donut for me, and told me not to worry, he was going to fix this once and for all. We went from office to office on campus and he co-signed a loan, which he later paid off for me, and then he paid the balance on my tuition for the loan didn't cover. He then took me out to lunch and told me the truth, my mom never helped my sister with her tuition, my sister had graduated the summer before my junior year of college. My sister later confirmed this but was not surprised my mom had lied. My dad had co-signed loan to help my sister out, which he later paid off for her, and my sister was able to get a scholarship and do coop to pay for her last two years. He also advised me that my mom was not so poorly off, as part of the divorce settlement he had to pay the mortgage and property taxes on our house, and even though my sister was now out on her own he was still paying her the same amount of child support of about $2,000 a month despite the fact that I was living on campus for 75% of the year and my mom has not given me a dime. Just to give you some clarification, my tuition and room and board before financial aid kicked in was $15,000 a year so she could have easily helped me out with school since after financial aid kicked in, when I was able to get it, the balance was usually $6,000. I was hurt to think my mom was just living off my child support and constantly making me feel guilty for wanting anything, or for not being able to cater to her every whim, she would get pissed that I wouldn't come home on the weekends to help her clean the house that I was not living in. I thought about how bad she made me feel growing up and made me feel worthless when in fact, had it not been for me or my sister, she would have not had a roof over her head after the divorce. He asks me to grant him access to my account so he could prove my mom was not paying for college and that I was. He asked me how I would feel if he took care of college instead of paying my mom child support. Sounded good to me. He even told me I could spend my breaks at his house instead of my mom's. I called my mom and told her that my dad had taken care of the issue and she had no remorse. She told me it was my own fault for not planning my finances better and for pissing away my money all summer. I just played it dumb and said she was right, but pointed out I had done what she told me to do and complained to my dad. A month later, my mom called me up pissed. My dad had spoken with the courts and there was going to be a hearing in their divorce case. My dad had proven that my mom had not been paying for mine nor my sister's tuition for college and that was the very reason my dad was obligated to pay child support till I was done college. Since I was living on campus, it didn't make sense to pay her child support when I was not living at home most of the year, and she hasn't given me one penny. My dad told the judge he would gladly pay for me to finish college but he was not going to pay my mom any more child support, nor pay the mortgage on the house. If my mom didn't want to take over the mortgage, they could sell the house and I could live with him over my breaks. My mom was freaking out over this and calling me selfish. I just reminded her that my tuition must cost a lot more than what she got in child support, since she was never able to help me with costs of school. She just kept laying guilt trips on me about how I was selfish because she didn't get to go to college right after high school, and how she never got to have four carefree years of college. I pointed out to her that she had not worked since my grandma died about three years ago, and that I was working and going to school at that time while she got to live a carefree life. She pretty much ripped me a new one at that point. She tried to get back at my dad by not paying utilities on the house to make it seem like she needed the money. She then told me that the electric and water were now shut off so if I wanted to come home for winter break, I needed to help her out, she had moved in with her boyfriend at his condo. I just told her that I would miss her but that I would just go to my dad's for winter break. She was pissed and cried about how selfish I was for not wanting to come home for Christmas. Side note, the Christmas before, my present was throwing out many of my personal belongings. Why? My mom was pissed off at me that I didn't want to come home one weekend to help her clean because to get home I had to take two buses, two trains, spend $20 one way and wait for her to hopefully remember to pick me up at the train station which was a whole 20 minute drive for her after I had traveled for 4 to 5 hours because I had finals and I told her I would help clean for the holidays once I came home for winter break. Her response? She took all of my things threw them in boxes and threw them out on the front lawn. Most of my things were destroyed by being left on in the rain and washed away most of them. I told my mom that I would come and visit her over my winter break, once she got the utilities turned on. I told my dad what was going on and he said he and my stepmom and my half-brother and sister were thrilled I was going to stay with him for winter break, and he can get me a job in his office as well for winter break. He also called my mom and reminded her that the child support had not stopped, 
and they were going to list the house in a few months, so what was this nonsense about the utilities being shut off? She was pissed but magically came up with the money to turn them back on. That spring my dad took officially by the court over my college tuition, and he even made sure I got my full financial aid since he had picked up W-2s for me. My mom lost her child support and was told by the judge that she better cooperate with the sale of the house and keep up with the utility bills etc. so it would sell. Her boyfriend moved in with her till the house sold and she moved to another time zone. The real kicker? It was cheaper for my dad to pay college costs, than to pay her child support. To summarize, my mom abused and exploited me and I got my revenge by causing her to lose her child support and free rent by doing what she told me to do for years, complained to my father. No regrets. Edit, thanks. Some of you have asked, are things better now? Depends on what you mean. I am not as close to her as I am with father and stepmom whom I grew closer to after college and still close to this day, but I still have a relationship with her. We talk, but I have learned not to trust her because she will let me down, like a couple of years ago we were supposed to meet for my birthday, and she stood me up. Now I don't include her at all when I plan birthdays or holidays. And some have asked how she treated us growing up. She wasn't 100% bad, but her bad moments were pretty bad. Granted I have met a lot of people who have had it worse so I try to remember that. After college she was trying to pull the same pity card she had when I was in school. This time she was trying to convince me to move from New Jersey to Tennessee, she had moved before my last year of college to a different time zone, and didn't even bother to tell me or my sister. She just took off, I liked the area and told her I would see if I can find a job and would consider taking her up on her offer to live in her guest room temporarily. She right away starting laying me on a guilt trip and I hung up. She then called my sister and complained about how, I have a daughter that doesn't want to take care of me. My sister and I both laugh about that. She wasn't even 50, perfectly healthy and refused to work. No way was I going to move in and take care of her. She pretty much spent most of my adult life in and out of mental hospitals and trying to convince us that either we want to live with her, or we want her to live with us. She moved into my grandparents old house in Philly. They passed away years ago. Didn't keep up with the repairs and had to sell it for less than what she felt it was worth. Wound up staying in various relatives guest rooms and coming up with excuses not to work and finally wore her welcome at so many people's houses that she wound up in the hospital and then in a shelter, and now I lives in subsidized housing. It's a cute apartment and is like a loft style, but guess what? She still complains about how bad she has it and how no one wants to take her in. LOL. Thanks again for all of the kind words, upvotes, and messages. I know I grew up in a less than perfect situation, but I always remind myself that there are many others who have had it worse, I at least had my father and my sister, and that going through something like that has taught me to be strong and to rely on myself. Now for some top comments. Now that is pro revenge. I'm glad that things have finally worked out well for you. Thanks. My mom was pissed at me for years, I think she still is a little for forcing her to grow up but hell, she forced me to grow up at 8. God that was painful to read. I'm sorry your life had to be like that, but I'm happy your dad was able to help you. Even happier you were able to help him. Painful as hell. It just kept getting worse. Satisfying ending though OP. I'm sorry you went through what you did, but I'm glad it's finally being resolved. Hope your mom gets the mental help she needs somehow. Good for you for turning the tables. I'm always amazed about how low these people can go. Not only could she have paid both your tuitions, but she would have had money left over. Instead, she played a victim and left you to starve. I hope her boyfriend sees her for who she is and leaves her on the curb. Oh, that boyfriend barely lasted a year. Same thing with the next one, then she got married and that lasted less than two years. Man, that was a phenomenally horrible divorce agreement if he was paying child support for offspring older than 18 and the mortgage on the house as well. Seriously. Two things to never buy cheaply in life, toilet paper and divorce lawyers. Seriously, WTF. $2,000 a month plus the mortgage? Either he's a millionaire or had a terrible lawyer. Why not keep up with his kids and go back to the courts with proof she wasn't taking care of them? My dad was unaware of what was going on, because as much as my mom told us to complain to our dad, she also had full custody of us and trained us never to talk about what happens at home with others. I once told my guidance counselor about what was going and she told my mom. My mom kept me home for two days to hit me and tell me how she hated me and was going to encourage me to die. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. 
Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.